Peyton, nice to see you again on this beautiful Sunday, this time with a quote from Peter Drucker. He states that one should waste as little effort as possible on improving areas of low competence because it takes far more energy and work to improve from incompetence to mediocrity than it takes to improve from first-rate performance to excellence. Please, Peyton, share your ideas on this one. Yeah, this is a really useful heuristic as it relates to navigating the world effectively and accomplishing our goals. It's the whole question of where do we focus our limited efforts, our limited attention toward our growth and toward our development and skill sets. And we can survey what we can do, who we are, what we've got, the tools in the toolkit, the arrows in the quiver, and we'll quickly realize that we've got strengths and weaknesses. Some things come natural to us and some things we struggle against and are consistently frustrated when we're bumping up against these weaknesses because we're just not good at it. We're not wired to be good at it. And the whole question of should I work on my strengths, should I work on my weaknesses is actually really nuanced in a lot of ways. But getting good at this meta skill of assessing where should I focus my learning efforts? Where should I focus my growth and development efforts? Where should I put my shoulder and energy behind uh, getting better and leveraging and improving and using a skill set? And what should I let go in order to allow the space and the intentional allocation toward the things that will be the highest yield? And a couple dynamics really play, in my mind, quite a large role into supporting why we would want to double down and reinvest in our strengths as opposed to trying to bring our weaknesses from bad to mediocre. <clears throat> and the biggest one, in my opinion, in terms of the world that we're living in and the opportunities before us is leverage and nonlinearity. And this is something that obviously applies to many domains. This is why compounding and the nature of investing over the long run is counterintuitively powerful for us. And obviously in the other end, high interest debt is uh, counterintuitively powerful as a force against us in a headwind. And just as leverage has created these dynamics where things grow and compound in a much larger way than we would expect over time, leverage also puts a great premium on really outsized strengths, really outlier strengths, if we can learn how to leverage them, which is an important meta skill in terms of maximizing a strength that we can grow to an exceptional degree. And the most extreme example that I know of this is Warren Buffett, where over the course of, I don't know, 60 years now that he's been running Berkshire Hathaway, he's built this incredible conglomerate and very powerful, large organization through very skilled judgment. He has one or maybe a few really outsized strengths in his discernment, his judgment, his clarity of thought, and his ability to make clear decisions that are devoid of the common temptations of exuberance and greed or fear and terror that many of his counterparts and colleagues are drastically inhibited by in the long run due to specific errors that arise due to uh, heavy temptations out of causes and conditions that come very occasionally actually in the path that he's able to resist. And his discernment his decision-making skills are maybe he gets the decision right 80% of the time where many of the people in other uh, similar positions make the right decision 70% of the time. So it's not like he's always right and everybody else is always wrong. Uh, he's marginally better than anybody else at what he's done over a long course of time in which he's done it. And that little bit of advantage, he has put a maximum amount of leverage behind for decades. And one uh, form that provides him the most leverage actually is the time horizon on which he has utilized this. So 
he's found <clears throat> leverage from other people's money that he originally took as investments in addition to his own that he earned. He brought that together and he levered up his judgment many times and then he took that and then he doubled down and levered up his judgment again with the proceeds of the first one and he did that over and over and over in large but very occasional chunks while having the wisdom to sit on his hands and wait for his pitch over a very long time horizon and because of that he has achieved insane results. He's focused on his strengths and he's figured out how to maximally leverage his strengths to create um, really strong outputs that few people have been able to match or replicate in his domain. And in a smaller way, the modern world has provided us with a ton of leverage in a lot of ways, where if we can have some strengths that are valuable, and then we can figure out how to take all of these tools available to us and lever the hell out of our strengths, we can achieve great results while actually using this, uh, the results from leveraging our strengths to um, solve the problems of our weaknesses or to put things in place to where we don't have to play to our weaknesses anymore. This can come in many forms, but to throw out a few examples, if somebody is a very good illustrator, maybe 200 years ago, they would be able to draw something on one piece of paper and then go find somebody to sell that one piece of paper to. And they can trade this output that they created once for a one-time transaction on the back end. Whereas now, if somebody is a really good illustrator, they have the leverage where there are companies online that can put this on t-shirts and they can market it online and sell this one illustration many times there. They can go somewhere else online and have a place that will ready make one-off prints that will drop ship to people who want to purchase them. They can um, create this thing that they can use across multiple mediums. They can use this other software to animate it and then be able to market their stuff by cool video movements. And then they can go over here and they can train other people how to do it in mass and uh, capture value from the skills that they've learned over here. And over and over and over, there are more and more paths to which we can leverage our strengths, especially an outsized strength that we can turn into an outlier by taking advantage of the many tools, many platforms, and the increasingly connected and flattened world that we participate in right now. And so, an outsized strength a few hundred years ago, that actually might get overcome and counteracted by a slew of weaknesses. And today, we can leverage our strength to such a degree that we can use the spoils from that strength leveraged in such a way to address many of our weaknesses via substitution, via utilizing resources or other people that have offsetting strengths and weaknesses by a ton of different uh, ways where we don't have to go down the paths of all of our weaknesses and just consistently suck and try to suck slightly less, where we can many times, we can take a few strengths and leverage them in such a way that it can solve those problems or it can overcome the long tail of uh, shortcomings that we have that we can't do. And so that, in my view, is one of the reasons uh, that that plays a large dynamic that shifts the balance from maybe our natural or evolved tendency where weakness was a big deal. So like if you can't, <laughs> if you're uh, 50,000 years ago and you're great at everything, but you can't outrun a lion, you are screwed. Or if you're a bad hunter and you can't eat, you are screwed. Or if you're doing all these things, you're living a great life, but you can't, um, <laughs> you can't find a mate and reproduce, you, your genes will die with you. Uh, now we're, we are in a different circumstance where um, one strength can overcome a lot of our weaknesses. And so we may be instinctively uh, miscalibrated to our current environment in terms of the risks and opportunities before us and the ways that we can navigate the world by a different strategy of min-maxing to an extent. What do you think about this and the strategies of strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, on the same lines, like you, you already said, uh, lean in your strengths so hard that it renders all your weaknesses like irrelevant. If you are the most skilled programmer in one field and cannot do anything else, like 
no communication abilities whatsoever, you still have the ability to leverage that in a very, very high premium. Um, this is the essence behind it. If you invest too much energy to just level out your weaknesses, you, you can never have enough time to level out all your weaknesses because there's every, on every field, there's something uh, that you haven't even discovered yet where you're weak at doing it. But if you uh, experimented a little bit and uh, know things to do where you are strong at, then putting the focus and energy towards this and where focus goes, your energy flows, you invest in um, increasing your level to uh, produce like value for society. And now with uh, even technology, we can leverage that value and create legacy value systems, like systematized value, like the course that teaches other people how to do things you are strong at. And then the course, you put it online and it's there forever, uh, as long as the data centers are up and the service is running. And so we have like a legacy value that um, can create some income. So. Lean into your strengths so hard that it renders your weaknesses irrelevant. This is a kind of respecting yourself enough to value your uniqueness, to value um, how uniquely made you are for special things and, uh, and for other things, certain things you are not so well equipped. Like uh, I have long legs and a short upper body, so I'm better not uh, try to train to compete in the Olympics of swimming. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I could like uh, start training to compete for uh, runner or sprinter competitions because I'm better equipped for that. This is just a, a physical reality and it's like uh, um, um, valuing your uniqueness through focusing on the things you are made for, uh, focusing on things the good Lord equipped you for, and to do them well. And th this goes into the similar example like you did, um, like a hunter who could not outrun a lion was eaten. Um, uh, try to imagine like a bow and arrow maker back then. Uh, he's very good in his work. He can uh search and find the wood um uh, for and and create the bow for three bows crossbows maybe and some arrows in one day and he needs uh something to close himself like uh from a cloth maker some leather suit or some skin reindeer skin uh, clothing whatever now he tries to make it by himself probably can create one in one week or whatever to close himself. Okay, that's good. But in the same time, he could have created like uh, seven times three more bows and arrows. So better he goes to the uh, clothes maker, which has the ability to sew some three clothes a day. Um, and therefore, if you team up with people who are strong and using their strengths and making their strengths productive, you can just... Uh, increase the economic output which is possible like a bow maker making three bows a day and the cloth maker making three um, suits a day if they team up in one day they can create six items but if they would just uh, be alone and try to do everything by themselves they just could have like they just created two items maybe or two items in one week and this is also the basis of why uh the why we we have so much wealth like adam smith also pointed out uh, with his pin factory example if you specialize in uh, just making one tiny step of the pin production line um you don't have the time loss through task switch because you also have to focus on just doing one thing you have the ability to tinker more with it and uh, by chance ex uh, experience uh, improvement of how you could improve the process and find something to improve the tools or whatever. So 
um, all these tiny details and focus on specialization also compound. And that's why the operating system of capitalism works so well in increasing the wealth of everyone who participates in the markets with his or her strength. That's why team teamwork is so important. Uh, that's why contributing with your unique strength is even more important to try than trying to fix your weaknesses as well, unless they are kind of integrity issues or or serious character flaws, <laughs> which render you unable un, uh, to work uh, together with others. So this is the basis of what, what I also uh, try to remind my team of all the time, that um, try to really find the things you are great at and try to think about what would happen if you just did more uh, things in your day, which you are great at, and less of the things you are not so great at, how would your schedule change? And how, how would the output of the total team change as well? It's like shifting the ego from the individual to the team level so that you contribute to the whole instead of only for yourself. Because it doesn't matter anymore if you are weak in one domain because the team will cover that with other people who are much, much stronger. And this is a, a really high leverage that uh, has the ability to uh, like 100 or 1000 X the output um, of teams um, versus uh, 10 X engineers, individual contributors, you know, this is why teamwork is so um, much more productive if you know how to teamwork well if you work well in a team uh, and make your strengths productive and try to pivot more and more towards making your strength productive and finding what you're good at. What do you think, Payton? Yeah, great thoughts. This, this whole concept of comparative advantage is so powerful and obviously applies on big scales, small scales, within companies, within economies, within families, within friend groups, within so many different forms of dynamics where there's multiple people with offsetting strengths and weaknesses. And it's positive sum at the end of the day. If you are using only your strengths uh, and you hire somebody to leverage their strengths, which are better than you at certain areas, then you're providing them an opportunity to use your, their strengths. And you're at the same time equipping yourself to leverage your own strengths way more. It, it is actually a good thing for yourself and others as well as obviously for your mission and what you're looking to manifest to improve at this skill. But there are a couple caveats to the whole strengths and weakness things and points of nuance that I think are really useful to consider and keep in mind in the whole equation. And the first and more straightforward of them is that our strengths today may not be our strengths tomorrow. And perhaps it's more useful to think in terms of capacities and limitations rather than static strengths and weaknesses. Capacities being what could become strengths, maybe are not strengths yet, but maybe they are actually a great capacity that we have. So I have a friend who's just an incredible musical genius, and there was a time before he ever touched a piano. And so at that point, he had a capacity, but not yet a strength. And we can have a growth mindset and also an awareness in terms of, okay, of this thing that I'm feeling frustrated and bumping against the wall and, and I can tell that I suck at it right now. Is this something that has the potential to become a strength that can be very outsized, exceptional and highly leveraged? Or maybe this is not an area of capacity for me. And so some degree of awareness in terms of what comes easy to me? What are my natural abilities and what meta skills do I have that might I have seen apply over here and lead to success in this strength that I can tell, oh yes, this may transfer over to here and also lead to the ability to cultivate a strength over here. Our strengths today are not what they're destined to be. And so there's some discernment that's useful in terms of seeing what the potential of us is. Because just because this thing is not a strength now doesn't mean that uh, it won't become one. But at the same time, just because I can manifest certain strengths where there is not one now, 
does not mean that I can manifest any strength where there is not one now. Sometimes I do just see that, oh yeah, if I'm not good at, uh, or if confrontation leaves me incredibly energetically drained, maybe I'm never going to be that strong at holding people accountable consistently because it's not in alignment with my personality and capacities. Or maybe I am totally capable uh, because of this and that reason and I can cultivate that strength. And it takes an awareness and clear judgment and clear thinking, not necessarily great logical, like we're going to put concepts in order and it will lead us to a clear conclusion, but rather listening to our intuition to be able to discern what kind of a situation is this. And that leads me into the other major nuance that I would call out on this is that <clears throat> this whole concept of focus on your strengths, grow your strengths, leverage your strengths, ignore your weaknesses, your weaknesses will become irrelevant. That's true for skills. It's true for activities and specific things that we do. But importantly, that is not true for meta skills. So meta skills are the things where this is a skill that we learn that we can cash in for other skills. And these are what I would argue the fundamentals that we can't afford to ignore if we want to manifest and leverage any strengths. These are things that will quasi universally or at least very, very frequently compound each other and enable us to leverage our strengths. Or if we neglect them, these things, regardless of our strengths over here, can hold us back and cause us to come crashing down. So if we think about a lot of people who have risen to greatness and then fall from greatness, it wasn't because they lost their strength. It was because they lost one of their meta skills. Typically, they lose awareness and that causes a, an increase in ego, which leads to delusion, which leads to poor judgment, which leads to feelings of separation and contraction and suffering that leads to really self undermining mistakes that alienate themselves from others and lead to poor judgment and ultimately a painful crash back down to earth. And awareness is probably, once again, in my opinion, the most important of these meta skills. This is the immune system of our ability to navigate the world, of our ability to manage and work around our weaknesses and our ability to leverage our strengths without them becoming metastasized and without them having this other side of that coin that can drag us down and cause us to undermine ourselves or lead us into a mindset of pride that causes us to become rigid rather than flexible and once again leads inevitably to suffering and self-destruction. And so these meta skills that I would consider foundational and essential regardless of our strengths and not just a matter of, oh, that's a weakness, I'm going to look the other way and just focus on my strength. These meta skills, at least the ones that I think of frequently, are probably learning, habit manipulation, managing our energy, and awareness. And so if I have this amazing strength that I am the greatest, most talented speaker ever, but I can't uh, manipulate my habits, and so I become unhealthy, and that inhibits my ability to uh, have good energy. And so I can't think clearly, and so I can't write as much, and so I can't practice as much, and I can't be as focused or present or clear or flowy when I am writing and speaking, then it's not going to ultimately serve me. I'm not going to be able to leverage that strength sustainably. Or if I am the greatest businessman ever, and I have this amazing strength of building companies, and it's going great, it's going great, but I lack awareness, then... I could get so wrapped up in the way that I'm currently going that I become blockbuster and think that this thing is going to go on forever and I'm rigid in the way that I see the dynamics of this market and then Netflix comes along and tanks me. Or in an even worse case, I am so busy and so leaning into the strength of being a great talented entrepreneur and visionary and blah, 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 I lose my awareness, then I become consumed by pride and ego and obsession with this one narrow domain before me. And then I let my health slip away over here. And that absolutely tanks me and takes me, rips me away from my capacity to work. Or 
I separate myself from my family and I'm brought into a spiral of regret, self-destruction, um, sort of collateral damage for the people that I love around me that ultimately undermines any satisfaction and prevents me from cashing in all of this surface level success for any true benefit that translates to my own flourishing or happiness. So awareness can undermine or a lack of awareness can undermine any strength that we would hope to bring to bear on the world or to manifest the vision that we want. If we lack awareness, it all will be destroyed by ourselves and we will watch ourselves sow the seeds of our own destruction eventually. And so this immune system, as well as other meta skills that we should cultivate and learn and that can lead to uh, leverage within strength. But these meta skills in general, regardless of how strong we are in certain domains of our life, will absolutely catch up to us if we don't pay attention. I think maybe maybe a good example is Kanye West being this creative genius, having these absolute amazing strengths, uh, using his charisma and his energy and his creativity to become a billionaire from nothing and having these great albums and 20 Grammys and all these accolades, and then having no awareness and letting his pride get absolutely out of control until he's thought himself in circles of complete delusion alienated himself from the people he loves and ends up getting totally ostracized, alienated and uh, coming plummeting back down to earth because he's gotten wrapped up in these horribly delusional stories and feelings of separation and hatred and disconnectedness that came to consume his mind. It was something that at least many of us saw kind of on the way up and, oh my God, he's kind of uh, soaring, flying, he's super prideful, he's an egomaniac, but look at all the shit that he's he's building and accomplishing. And then we see how a lack of awareness catches up with him and with many of us in oftentimes in smaller, more everyday ways along this path. And so these these meta skills are unlike skills in the sense of with skills, oftentimes we are served by prioritizing our strengths, growing our strengths, leveraging our strengths, letting the weaknesses become irrelevant because we have found ways to use our strengths to put solutions in place that solve and accommodate for the weaknesses. In meta skills, it is the opposite. These are foundational, they are mutually reinforcing, and they can propel us and give us immense momentum and tailwinds from behind, or they can give us immense headwinds and limitations, or even risks and areas of destruction from ahead if we don't adequately respect and honor these important foundations of charting our path effectively. And so that's a couple of the nuances I see in this strength and weaknesses debate. What do you think about these? I love that you brought up the dynamic view of uh, uh, using strength and weaknesses and also being aware of the possible futures which you can encounter if you only focus on your strength, you know. The dynamic behind it, uh, seeing it as cap capacities and limitations, um, also pays respect to your own uniqueness because uh, we are born and we do not know nothing, you know? And then we learn the things. Everything we know now, we sometime had to learn. And therefore, we have the ability to form and shape and also to move in a direction which... Uh, which is uniquely made for us because we we feel that things come naturally to us, like you said. We feel uh, we we are really good at things, and we come to flow easily when we when we challenge ourselves in a certain way. And moving from the static strength and weaknesses perspective to the uh, dynamic uh, capacities and limitations perspective. And seeing meta skills as the enablers for managing your uh, your output and your productivity is just just a great reminder, and I I so needed to hear that because it re reminds me of the agodicity of um, everything. You know, we wanna we wanna not only um, survive and live a fairly good life and be successful in, in, in this one path we have, but in, in every possible path. And we know that chance can kick in randomly and then it matters how we positioned ourselves, how aware we are, how good we learn to manipulate our habits, or even how good uh, we know how to manage our energy or uh, how to learn and how flexible we are so that we can avoid 
uh, the big risks that lead to our downfall, the big risk of being unaware, slipping back into um, just being a moist robot and uh, driving all these ancient but probably unhelpful in the long term pro uh, programs which um, lead to self destruction if we overeat on sugar if we overindulge in uh, in the the pleasures and uh, you know and we lose ourselves we destroy our dopamine system in our brain all these risks can be mitigated via the meta skills and paying tribute to your capabilities um brings um the possibilities to develop new strength and even float on the next wave which will come and therefore we can uh, we can move gracefully and adapt and serve the next wave which will certainly some somehow come along the way if we have the awareness of where we want to be placed where we want to be positioned to catch a wave we have to be in the ocean so therefore also we need to avoid the big cliffs so we need to avoid the ruin but also move ourselves into a position where we catch the wave if we want to serve it thank you for this great reminder that it does not matter um, whether we are really exceptionally strong in one area where whether we can float this strength up to uh, unbelievable heights if we cannot manage to stay there and fall down again and uh, this is also a good reminder to coming together and discussing these things so that we can remind ourselves where we lack awareness of certain details like you reminded me right now that i lack the awareness that the world is dynamical <laughs> that the world is a place full of movement and change and sometimes chaos and it does not matter only to to think statically but if we go together as a team and really make our strength productive so that our weaknesses don't matter anymore we move from seeing the world in black and white to seeing the world in colors and the more people come together with judgment and the ability to think and to remind ourselves and to be aware um, and uh, with the commitment to to learn the meta skills as well then we have a much higher probability of not dying early or even being successful as well so do you have any further thoughts on this page well put my friend yeah wonderful reminders and definitely a reminder for me to have a degree of acceptance of reality of my weaknesses i think recently i've kind of gotten frustrated with certain of them and I think that comes up for a lot of us and it's important to recognize that each one of us has capacities and limitations and that's just mm -hmm. the way things are. We are never going to be omnipotent. We are never going to be able to do everything at all times and all phases for all people in all circumstances in all ways, a hundred percent consistently. It's just not reality. And so first having an understanding kind of eyes open and clear sight of what is, can enable us to have a more humble and nuanced relationship with our strengths and weaknesses, capacities and limitations, and use that knowledge, mm -hmm. use that awareness to be able to flow through the world a little more efficiently and smoothly. So I'm definitely going to be paying attention to that. And I appreciate your reminders on a lot of these things, man. Great talking to you about this. Great talking to you as well. And the amount of freedom which comes with accepting yourself as you are liberates you to team up with people who are better in the things you need to be done and if you team up with these people the amount of liberation to your own creativity to your own strength is enormous so try it uh try to think of a thing where you're blocked and try to identify 
um, what causes your blockade, and then try to find a person which can help you remove that blockade and see how your energy will flow again and how your energy put into the right focused efforts will produce um, unimaginably beautiful outputs only from uh, making your unique strength productive. So maybe 100%. go into the week with awareness, with uh, the curiosity of discovering our strength and with the humility of accepting ourselves as we are and with the sense of experimentation to try to make our weaknesses irrelevant through asking people for help. Yeah, 100%. Great reminders, great mindsets, and something that we can continuously bring some spotlight and some consciousness toward. I appreciate you, my man. Great talking to you as always. Appreciate you so much, man. Thanks for the reminders and thank you for the talk. See you Likewise. soon. Yep, have a great week.